I actually consider myself not so good in God of Steel. If hell exists, evil game developers are probably debugging customer motion implementations for all eternity. Turned out my last video contains a ruined chapter about root motion with bugged code. And in the world score, the chapter is like 5% of tutorial value, but I still consider this an awful stain on my reputation. Today I want to talk about what happened and how to fix it on several abstraction levels. What happened? Look at this code. On my enter state I thought I set the root motion track of the player to the skeleton's root position track. As it turned out, there is no such track and these strings are practically dead. I didn't notice it because the animation itself has such low amount of root motion and returns to the start position that I saw the camera move and was happy. What is happening in reality is that code doesn't cancel the skeleton's root motion. It just adds physical movement on top, creating double dipping. It's just hard to notice. On the Godos part, I am a bit unhappy that this call was silently ignored without even warnings. Imagine my surprise when I was in the process of transitioning this demo to a much nicer one with better animations. My new sexy longsword animation has a lot of root motion and does not return to the initial position. Purple is the player physically, and the green sphere is the skeleton's root. Now the double dipping is much more noticeable. Let's try to fix this. I obviously have a problem of these strings being silently ignored, so we must select a proper root motion track. What the interface suggests us? Hmm, the interface actually bundles the position track together with rotation. I don't want that. I read somewhere that you maybe can actually add here indexation and it can be some field of the track, but at this point, as Godot silently ignores the wrong instruction and doesn't have good tooltip hints, finding this magical track's indexation becomes a divination process. I have some dignity and I am not going to voodoo program in this shit. What can we do out of the root motion scope to fix double dipping? The root of the problem, pun intended, is that the skeleton is a 3D object that is a child of the pair at the moment of the physical movement happening. Okay, now let's brainstorm some shitty crutches for this. We can try to compensate this movement by moving the skeleton with the negative player's velocity. But moving slide isn't just a position plus equals velocity, it is world aware, so we need to simulate such a behavior for the root as well. Can be done with some physical read requests, but it doesn't need to be that hard. All my essence screams at me that there must be a better solution. And even if we achieve this, don't forget that we are decoupled from animation being played here. Right now it bites us in the ass, because the playing of the animation happens not in this call time, and there will be unpredictable jittering if we are repositioning the skeleton in parallel. We can make skeleton a top level node for the duration of the hit. It seems to work at first, but here two even bigger problems are emerging. First one is the screen slip to idle. The reason is our animation player is of course blending animations and the blending of the last frame of the hit and the first frame of the idle is exactly the slip. We can sort of cope with this by stopping our animation player on exit only for it to be activated again three code strings further. It seems to work, but it's cringe from architectural perspective and also lead to this little leap again. This leap will be with you always if the frame of the hit where the animation stopped and the idle's first frame aren't pixel perfectly equal, and they hardly ever be. And if you are trying to achieve this, you are hardcoding your behaviors with animation's timings. If we decide to have pixel perfect hit end into idle, we aren't allowed to change the transition timing without a full reanimation of our hit asset. It won't be supportable. We can try some mid-frame root teleportation, but again, it needs to be synchronized with actual animation player update tick. And I will cut my fingers before they type anything into the animation call method track. And we certainly need the animator to work uninterruptibly, because we need that blending to mask the frame difference between late slash and early idle. The second boss problem with any top layer skeleton is its unphysicsness. If the skeleton is top level, it does whatever the animation wants, including walking into a wall. The player is moving sliding, so it will stay here, but the top level skeleton doesn't give a flying fuck about your physical world. Nice solution doesn't emerge, because all this time the process wasn't exactly a brainstorm, but more of a shitstorm. The reason we have the skeleton here in the model is to provide pose. The skeleton is a bones pose provider for our visuals to be parented and nothing more, 
The skeleton isn't and doesn't need to provide any other physical simulation data. The fact that we have our character's velocity encoded in this data structure called animation track is an unfortunate coincidence and nothing more, and definitely not a design choice. As the skeleton is a post provider only, we need its root motion fixed in place and extract data properly. Right now we don't know how to do it because the wall interface and the guide around the root motion are meh, probably doable but will be a hell of a geometry problem. Alternatively, we can cave in and use the classical root motion solution used in the documentation, but I don't like this choice from architectural perspective. And what is more frightening, it isn't easy as well. Turning the hips track into a root motion track and following guide doesn't immediately solve our problem and requires some code turning understanding. But solution must be fast and easy if it wants to even be considered. But the original approach is bad and complicated, which kinda crosses it out. And all these quaternions from parallel universe of played animations. Do you trust them, your project's fate? We need a simple swirl slash now, but we'll have tracking some time. Possibly some first movements. Additive wins and even the wins that are turn on the character. Tell me, do you really want to use the quaternions that you aren't fully understand where I came from? That early. I am certainly not using this now, mostly because I am the stubbornest of donkeys when it comes to caving into bad decisions. I mean, holy fuck, the animator did a good job and provided us a nice asset. It has all it needs to. It must be fucking pluggable, Jesus Christ. But the situation is starting to look dire. We need the animation to be in place to be a post provider and nothing else. But we need it also to be not in place to provide the tracks to extract data from. Why don't you tell me this? Could you look to the left and the right at the same time? Hmm? Yeah, I guess it's doable. Huh? I'm looking to the right while looking to the left. This is what you mean, right? Now it's all coming together, but we aren't finished yet. I can just delete those keys and add here an idle key, because the animation has a lot of Y movement that we need to preserve. Ideally, we need to save all these key points, but somehow delete only the Z coordinate movement from them, like here. <sighs> but it has 54 key points, and I don't even delete the Z component, I am making it a minus 0 0.062. The internet has my root motion disgrace documented, and I am furious. I don't want to fix that one mistake. I want that mistake to be the last root motion problem I ever saw. I need a system that is scalable, changeable, flexible and automatic, and changing 50 fucking 4 keys by hand has none of that. Let's dig further. Track is not a class. Okay. Animation is a class to work with tracks. Hmm. Those functions I certainly need. See? It's a four cycle. Let's duplicate the asset and distract the bacon at some Z coordinate. Something like this, I suppose. Then, as the state's animation, we will play the rooted version, but the code will extract its velocity from a working one. It works! Uh, what? So, apparently, when this code is executed at the start of our program, it doesn't work destructively. It works in the runtime. You see 3 times 54 keys here, because the bots model is that exact scene instantiated, and when their time to bake animation comes, they already have it projected. But all that is happening in our runtime imagination. Interesting effect. But I'd better have it destructively modified forever. Imagine you have 500 animations. Believe me, your level loading has some other work to do instead of dynamically runtime baking your keys. Track is not a class, animation has no method to save animations, animation library and all animation nodes as well. And the resources can't also. But remember, all you can do with editor can be done with code somehow. <laughs> data piece. So it's a thin data piece, and where is a thin data piece, there is a service to manage it. I can sniff it, I am sensing its scent in the air, I am just bad, bad and godo and can't find a fucking class. Hmm, what is this? Importer, importer, importer. 
Who are you? Huh. Huh. Hello. Please work. Yes, I succeeded. I activated it. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a tool for a customized transformations baking without leaving Godot. We can modify copied assets after asset creation phase for them to fit any R need. Right now, I don't want to touch it more before I add the rest of the nice animations. But now, the reality can be whatever I want again. And sooner or later, these motion tracks will be extracted, turned into three projected velocity tracks and added into our backend animations. There is the place, because animation of the skeleton is a pose provider. The code in the branch for the fourth episode is fixed. Sorry for a lower quality video, and goodbye again.